Hello dear students, myself Dr. Sachin Gurule, Assistant Professor from Department of Zoology KTHM College, Nasik. In the previous video of subject Animal Diversity 3rd of Class SYBSC, we are learning the Chapter 4 that is Introduction to the Superclass Pisces. And in previous two lectures we have already learned the silent features of superclasses that is Pisces and the classification of the Pisces and then after we have learned <coughs> the first class that is the chondrichthys which is known as the cartilaginous fishes or elasmo branch fishes. Now in this video we are going to learn the silent features of the class Ostichthys commonly known as the bony fishes. So let's see. So in the previous lecture, in the classification we have learned, the earlier best known classification was provided by Berg in 1940, wherein he has recognized or classified the superclass Pisces into the total seven classes, of which three classes are belongs to the extinct fishes and remaining four are the instinct fishes but the revised and the widely accepted classification was given by the romer in 1959 and he has classified the fishes into the two classes that is chondrichthys and ostichthys depending on which kind of the endoskeleton present into the fishes Chondrichthys contains the cartilaginous endoskeleton while Ostichthys contains the bony endoskeleton and later on the Parker and Haswell in 1960 they have added the Placoderm class which is the class of the extinct fishes. So in this way according to the recent and widely accepted classification for that superclass Pisces given by the Romer and added by the Parker and Haswell. The class superclass Pisces is divisible into the three classes that is Placodermy representing extinct fishes, Chondrichthys which are known as cartilaginous fishes and the third one is Ostichthys which is known as the bony fishes. So of which we have already finished with the Chondrichthys. So let's see the ostichthys. <clears throat> now this ostichthys, this word is coming from the Greek origin and it coming from the word that is osteon means the bone and ichthys means fish refers to the bony endoskeleton of the fishes and hence all these ostichthys they are also known as the bony fishes as they contains the bony endoskeleton in their body. So let's see the silent features of class ostichthys. Now this first of all, all the fishes belongs to that ostichthys inhibits in all sort of warm and cold water bodies. For example, they found into the fresh water, they also found into the brackish water or the salt water. In the previous class that is chondrichthys known as a cartilaginous fishes we have learned most of the cartilaginous fishes are belongs to the marine habitat and marine fishes but as compared with the this chondrichthys this ostrichthys they inhibits in all sort of the water bodies that is they present in all kind of the water bodies it may be the fresh water it may be the salt water or maybe the brackish water then most important characteristic feature of this ostrichthys is the endoskeleton chiefly in the form of bone or the bony endoskeleton except in the sturgeons it is a cartilaginous but the bony endoskeleton is a prime feature of this group known as the ostichthys. Here the notochord is replaced by a distinct vertebrae and the pelvic girdle usually small and simple or may be absent. So pelvic girdle usually it is small. So pelvic girdle means the girdle which is located at the pelvic region of the fish 
which is referred as the pelvic girdle. So it is usually smaller in size and simple or even in some cases it is completely absent and the claspers which are the copulatory organs which are found into the feces of the condyle thighs that are absent into the ostic thighs. So there is no claspers in the ostic thighs. Then if you see the body of ostic thighs, obviously it is a usually spindle shape and the streamline. So here in this figure you can see the examples of the bony fishes and if you see the shape of the body it is somewhat spindle shape means it is pointed at a somewhat, uh, somewhat pointed at both the end and is a streamlined body. So both median <coughs> and paired fins they are supported by either cartilaginous or the bony fin rays. So here in this diagram you can see there are different kinds of the fins are there. Median fin includes the dorsal fin, anal fin and the, or it is also referred as a ventral fin and this is caudal fin. Okay. So these fins they are always supported with the help of fin rays and that fin rays. So here in this diagram you can see. So these are the fin rays that fin rays either made up of cartilaginous material or the bony material and these fin rays they are responsible for giving the support to the that fin so which is again a characteristic feature <coughs> of the ostrich thighs then if you see the tail now tail is usually the homo circle type homo circle in the sense if you see the upper lobe which is known as a epicordal lobe and this one is a lower lobe which is known as a hypocordal lobe so if the tail fin has the equal size and shape of the epicordal lobe with that of the hypocordal lobe, such a kind of the tail fin we call as the homocircle kind of the tail fin in which the vertebral column which runs dorsally, it reaches up to the base of that tail and the epicordal and hypocordal lobe is similar and such a tail fin is referred as homocircle. So all the ostrichthyes species, they contains such a kind of the homo circle type of tail fin in the normal condition but in some cases it may be vary the next characteristic feature the skin with the dermal bony scale which are mesodermal in origin and there are three types of the scales as an exoskeletal part is recognized into the ostrich thighs and these types are cycloid scale tenoid scale and the ganoid scale. So here in this diagram you can see the three different kinds of the scales are present into the skin of the bony fishes so called as the, the ostric thighs. So first one is a cycloid it is a somewhat a circular in nature then tenoid because they are having a tini or the uh, teeth or the spines at one edges hence it is referred as the tenoid scale and next one is the ganoid or the rhomboid kind of the uh, scales. So either one of the kind of the scale is always present into the bony fishes. Then the next characteristic feature the skin also contains a many mucus gland as the many mucus glands are present into the skin their skin is always slimy and moist one. So this is due to the presence of the mucus gland which secrete a huge amount of the mucus on their surface. Then next characteristic feature, the mouth is terminal. So here you can see in this diagram, the mouth is located at the proximal end just at the tip and such a mouth is referred as the terminal mouth and the jaws usually provided with a teeth. So teeth are also there and the mouth is terminal. Then digestive system is complete one and this digestive tract leads or ends into the anus instead of the cloaca. Now we have learned into the chondric thighs that the cloaca is a common opening or the common chamber for the digestive and urinogenital system but here in case of the ostrich thighs that is a bony fishes the digestive system is ends into the anus means the anus is there the cloaca is absent among the ostrich thighs. <clears throat> then next characteristic feature 
the external nares external nares lies on the dorsal surface of the snout so this is a snout snout is a uh, the uh, proximal terminal portion of the body and if you see this is a dorsal side and these are the external nares or the nostrils which are present at the dorsal surface and in case of lung fishes the internal nares are also present so this is uh, restricted only into the lung fishes which are incapable of the breathing the air which also contains the internal nares which are joined with the external nares then four pairs of gills are present on the bony gill arches and these gill arches they are always covered with the help of operculum so operculum is always there in case of this ostricthys that is the bony fishes and the next characteristic that is swim bladder so we have already discussed into the side when we are discussing the silent features of the superclass spices many of the fishes they contains a swim bladder or this uh, swim bladder is responsible for providing the buoyancy to the many fishes and this swim bladder uh, bladder is usually present into the ostrich thighs but it is reduced into the chondric thighs with that we have already learned but as we are learning this ostrich thighs the ostrich thighs usually contains a swim bladder or swim bladder is also referred as a air bladder which provides the buoyancy to the this animal and in some cases that swim bladder or the air bladder it is also acting as the accessory respiratory organ for providing the additional supply of the oxygen so this is also one of the peculiarity of the bony fishes that is ostrich thighs now this swim bladder facilitate the floating and functions as a respiratory organ in some cases then if you see the heart heart is two chambered and it has the sinus venosus and conus arteriosus which are the accessory chambers but actually if you see this diagram the heart of the bony fishes contains only two chamber first one is a atrium and second one is a uh, this ventricle and in addition to this atrium and the ventricle or auricle or ventricle it also contains the two accessory chamber and that name of this accessory chamber is this one sinus venosus this sinus venosus collects the used blood from the different coming from the different organ and this is the uh, referred as a conus arteriosus which is another chamber it is also referred as a bulbous ar arteriosus or you can uh, call it as a conus arteriosus which is also a accessory chamber which uh, travels the blood from that of the ventricle and it goes into the ventral aorta so usually the bony fishes contains only the two chamber but there is a some exceptional condition where the lung fishes belongs to that ostrich thighs they have a three chambered heart and they are provided with a two auricle and single ventricle so this is the exceptional condition only with the lung fishes but otherwise all the bony fishes or the ostrich thighs they always contains only the two chamber Okay. Then next characteristic feature, the kidneys are the mesonephric. So excretion is a ureotelic. Ureotelic in the sense the they eliminate the nitrogenous waste material in the form of urea and such animals which are called as a ureotelic organism. So excretion is ureotelic in case of that bony fishes and the renal portal system is well developed among the bony fishes also. Then if you see the nervous system, the brain is relatively small having the olfactory lobes and the cerebellum but contrary it contains a large size optic lobe and the cerebellum. In case of the chondrichthys or the cartilaginous fishes we have learned the olfactory lobe and cerebrum is much more, uh, larger than that of the optic lobes and cerebellum but here in case of the bony fish the condition is somewhat reversed where 
it contains a small olfactory lobes or the olfactory bulb and the cerebrum is also smaller in size but if you see the midbrain known as the optic lobe and the hindwing that is a cerebellum this optic lobe and the cerebellum is highly developed or the large in size than that of the forebrain that is olfactory lobe and the cerebrum which is again a distinguishing feature between the cartilaginous fishes and the bony fishes so cartilaginous fishes contains the larger forebrain and smaller mid and the hindbrain but here the forebrain is smaller and mid and the hindbrain is usually larger in size so this is another characteristic feature now as like that of all the fishes this bony fishes also contains a cranial nerves and there are total 10 pairs of the cranial nerves are there which are arising from the brain and they are going to innervate into the organs or the different body part belong to the head region which are known as the cranial nerves and such a 10 pairs of the cranial nerves are present among the these bony fishes also. The next characteristic feature about the lateral line receptor, we have already discussed this lateral line receptor which are the sense organ among the fishes and this lateral line system is well developed among the this ostrichthys that is a bony fishes. Then the internal layers, they are or internal ear, they are provided with a three semicircular canal. So this is a uh, diagram of the uh, internal ear or it is also referred as a statocaustic organ which contains a three semicircular canal so here in this diagram you can see so this one is a anterior vertical canal then this one is a posterior vertical canal and this one is a horizontal canal so in this way this internal ear so called as a statocaustic organ which is the organ concerned with the balancing it contains a three semicircular canal the anterior vertical posterior vertical and the horizontal canal so in this way the three semi semicircular canal you can found into the internal ear then regarding the sexes sexes are separate and if you see the gonads so here these are the gonads of that fishes and the gonads are in a pairs so pair of the testes is there and pair of the ovaries is there so gonads are always in the paired then fertilization is generally the external one external in the sense the female releases the egg and approaching towards that egg male releases his sperm and whatever fertilization is there that fertilization occurs outside the body in the water medium where they are living such a kind of fertilization we call as the external fertilization so usually the bony fishes has the external fertilization so most of the forms belongs to that ostrich thighs are the oviparous oviparous in the sense they are laying the eggs they lay the eggs but some are viviparous also viviparous in the sense they are giving birth to their young ones but the oviparity is more common than that of the viviparity among the bony fishes but remarkable characteristic feature or the unique feature of a bony fish is some of the bony fish they also shows a parental care so here in this diagram you can see few examples of the fishes we shows a presence of the parental care particularly these fishes particularly their adult they guard either their eggs or their young ones so here in this diagram you can see the a couple male and the female fish which is guarding their egg mass and the newly hatched young ones around themselves so here you can see so this is the laid egg mass of this fishes and this fish um, and the parent fish is going to guard here now extreme condition is seen in some cases where the young ones which are hatched out from the eggs when the parents realize certain threat they can able to withdraw all the their young ones into their directly into their mouths and they are periodically comes off but for the purpose of protection the young ones can be kept into their mouth cavity or the buccal cavity showing a example of parental care so here this fish is also guarding their eggs and this one again is a unique um, uh, 
organism belongs to that bony fish or the ostrichthys so which is known as a sea horse that is hippocampus the female generally lay their fertilized eggs into the pouch of the male okay so this pouch contains the fertilized egg which is laid by the female and male goes under the process of a gestation period or the pregnancy period and the young ones are released once the eggs are hatched out and their young ones are developed then and then they uh, emit out their young ones out of that patch which is shown by the male seahorse which is the another interesting parental care can be found into the bony fishes so in some bony fishes not always but some bony fishes shows is such a kind of parental care for guarding their eggs and their young ones the next characteristic feature about a cleavage the cleavage is a meroblastic type and the development is the direct one in case of the uh, this ostrichthys or the bony fish, uh, fishes and rarely with a metamorphosis now we have already learned what mean by the meroblastic cleavage so here if you see the eggs the cleavage is superficial or the superficial disc of the uh, fertilized egg is only goes under the process of the cell division and the cell plate is going, going to uh, the proximal portion of the embryo is going to develop into the uh, whole individual only because the vegetal pole part of the vegetal pole it do not divides such a kind of the cleavage we call as the meroblastic discoidal cleavage which is most common kind of the cleavage found among the fishes so this is about the silent features of the ostrichthys then regarding the examples now examples of ostrichthys means a bony fishes are the labio and katla labio is also referred as a rohu and katla is also referred as a katla which are one of the major carp of the freshwater which are domesticated by the human being in the artificial pond for getting the food material so these are quite a very common fishes that is labio and katla which are found in a local market um, of our surrounding then another example is the clopia which is commonly known as the herrings then clarius which is commonly known as the magur then salmo you have heard about is salmon that salmon is also one of the example of the bony fish then the exocetus exocetus is somewhat the remarkable fish which are provided with a large pectoral fins and these pectoral fins are useful for jumping out of the water and hence these fishes are also referred as the flying fishes and the another example is the hippocampus which is commonly known as the sea horse so these are the few examples of the ostrichthys so called as the bony fishes so of which we are going to discuss just two examples of the bony fish that is labio and katla so let's see first of all the labio now labio is commonly known as the rohu and is one of the indian major carp which is belongs to the family cyprinidae and these fishes they are commonly found into the freshwater ponds river lake and the estuarine region but most importantly these fishes prefers a clean water so as they live into the clean water and it is chiefly herbivorous fish and they are bottom feeders herbivorous in the sense they are feeding on the algae phytoplanktons and the submerged vegetation which is available into the freshwater bodies and they are bottom feeder means they are prefer to live at the bottom and feed at the bottom of the water body so it frequently comes out of the water surface to take the air into the air bladder or the swim bladder which is well developed in these fishes then if you see the body the body is laterally compressed and the color is a fusiform and attain the maximum length of about the 1 meter the color is blackish gray on the back side so this um, back side is having the blackish uh, gray color and the silver or the whitish at the ventral side so the color from the dorsal side and the ventral side differs from one another 
the body is covered by overlapping cycloid kind of the scales which are a somewhat circular in nature and if you see the head the head is prominent and is provided with a blunt snout so snout is a terminal portion here you can see the blunt snout is there then eyes are large without eyelids so eyelids are absent the mouth is subterminal means just below the terminal portion so this is referred as the subterminal portion and directed downwards and surrounded by the thick lips now they contains a large dorsal fin so here in this diagram you can see the dorsal fin which is located at about the middle region of the body which is a trunk region so trunk region is a middle part and at the middle you will found a large dorsal fin and then the pectoral fins uh, without spinous rays so these are the pectoral fins which are not provided with a spinous uh, rays then tail is small and it is also laterally compressed narrow behind and we have already learned all the ostic thighs or the bony fish contains the homo circle kind of the tail fin and these fishes contains a air bladder or swim bladder which is usually large and is divided into the anterior and the posterior chamber which gives the additional buoyancy to the fishes and is also concerned with a some sort of the respiration also now economically these fishes are very important due to their food value as they are domesticated artificially by the human being and their flesh is also a delicious and a rich source of the protein so this is about the first example that is the labio rohita commonly known as roh the second example is katla katla now katla katla is large freshwater fish which is distributed throughout the india bangladesh nepal and the thailand means it is found into the asian countries now these fish are the surface feeder means they are feeds on the surface of the fresh water bodies and feeding on the plankton insects vegetable debris algae and also feeds on a small crustacean means these fish they are carnivorous fish okay or you can ask them as a or call them as a omnivorous because they feeds on both vegetable debris as well as the other organism but it is referred as a carnivorous fish then katla katla is largest indian carp which is commonly known as a katla in hindi and if you see the body is a short dip with a rounded abdomen so abdomen is somewhat rounded measure more than a meter in length if you see the dorsal profile of this fish the dorsal profile of the body is more convex so here you can see the more convex nature of the dorsal profile of which is the identification mark so with this character you can easily able to distinguish between the labio and the katla with their dorsal profile the color is brackish or grayish in color from the dorsal side but again the silver from the ventral side scales are provided with a pink or coppery color in the center on the dorsal side while the whitish from the ventral side or the below then head is broad large with a rounded eyes are there mouth is wide with a prominent upper lip so here in this diagram you can see the prominent uh, lower lip the dark black paired median fins are present so here the dorsal fin this is a median fin and this one is also known as a median fin then dorsal fin is a quite larger so this dorsal fin is quite larger and the caudal fin is bilobed homo circle type so they also contains a air bladder which is large and again divided into the anterior and the posterior chamber and as like that of the labio it is also the economically important fish because it is domesticated artificially in by the human being for getting the food as their food is very delicious and is also a one of the rich source of the protein so this is about the example of the ostic thighs that is katla katla so with this we have learned in this lecture that is silent features of the ostic thighs which are known as a bony fishes and their examples 
सो थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच